to Sugar Coated. I'm your host, Adrian Garland, the CEO and founder of She Leads Media. For far too long, women have been conditioned to sugarcoat their words, their actions, and the way they show up in the world, and to conform to certain cultural norms and ideals. This is inherently designed to keep those who are outside of the norm from gaining power, prestige, wealth, and influence, preventing more women from being recognized and respected as the powerful leaders that we truly are. Join me each week as we dive into raw conversations with remarkable, uncompromising, and inspirational women that will encourage you to strip away your sugar coating and move boldly in the direction of your magnificent dreams. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sugar Coated. I'm your host, Adrienne Garland, and I am doing something a little bit differently today. As you may know, I'm the CEO of She Leads Media, and we have a wonderful community online. Uh, It's on the Mighty Networks platform, which I totally love. And we have about 400 members in our community. So for the last several weeks, uh, it's probably been about two months now, I have been conducting She Leads Live uh, online events. And what I'm doing is giving the members of our community the ability to present on their area of expertise. And it has been an absolutely wonderful experience. We get a lot of incredible interaction with the different members of the community. These lives are not huge, but I think they're very impactful. Uh, Like I said, there are a lot of questions that come up. We share some of our challenges and we get answers from experts. So it's been absolutely wonderful. This week, we had the pleasure of welcoming Janice Carmina to the She Leads Live. And Janice has an incredible story, which you'll hear on this upcoming recording. Uh, She is an ex-police officer. She's Canadian, uh, which makes her really nice. And she is also the e-commerce queen bee. Great name, right? So what Janice has done is uh, she took a side gig, if you will, and she turned it into a six-figure business. And then she did it again with another business. And the way that she did it is that she utilized Amazon and she utilized principles of product development. And she's created online e-commerce businesses that have really done incredibly well. And when she got hurt in her career, in her policing career, which she goes into the whole story of what happened, because she was sort of playing around with this on the side, it gave her the ability to uh, continue to earn a significant income, probably more than she was making as a police officer, by tapping into information that, quite frankly, is there for all to take advantage of. I wasn't originally planning on recording the live and and putting it on my podcast, but I just thought that the information was so good and the questions that we asked were so good. Uh, There was a lot of interaction. So I hope that you find tremendous value from this conversation. There are definitely some parts that you'll hear where the sound isn't as perfect as I'd like it to be, but the the content is so relevant that I wanted to get it out to you ASAP. So listen in and let me know what you think. I am so excited to welcome Janice Carmina to the She Leads Live series. And I am so excited because when I heard Janice's story, um, and you'll you'll hear it, I'm sure, she, first of all, is just a very incredible, generous person. And then the fact that she has built a couple of different brands, e-commerce brands, and been able to 
you know, grow businesses and be profitable is something that I am inspired by personally. Uh, and I've thought so much about how can she leads create some type of a brand online that can generate some income so that we can do some of the more things that we'd like to do with she leads. So welcome Janice. And I am going to just let you take it away. Oh, thanks so much. And you say not, you know, not many people are here, but the most important people are here, Bonnie and Lauren and Adrian. It's all that matters. (laughs) It's a party. So what do you want to know about? Let's talk about e-commerce and developing products and everything like that. So a bit of background about me. Um, I'm a police officer in Victoria. I've been a police officer for 17 years right now. And I started the whole e-commerce and Amazon as a side gig. It was about five years ago, four years ago. And I was like, okay, I work two days, two nights. I had four days off. My kids were older. They were in school. And I was like, what am I going to do on my four days off? So I was getting a bit bored. I was by myself hanging out during the day. I'd go for coffee with friends. And I'm like, okay, really? I'm only working a part-time job here with my schedule. I need a side gig. So I was doing just what everybody else does. I was Googling, you know, how to make money at home. How do you, um, hi, Bonnie, I see your question. We'll talk about that after. Um, How to make money at home, how to, you know, work from home and not have to go to a job because I also couldn't get a second job, like say serving or anything like that because it conflicts with policing. So I had to have permission. So I was like, okay, this is cool. So On the Googling and YouTube, I found Amazon FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon. And I was like, whoa, here, wait, anybody can have an Amazon store? I didn't know that. I didn't know that Amazon was actually made up of all these third-party sellers and people like you and me selling their products on Amazon. I thought they owned everything. Well, I was quite surprised, and but that opened a whole new road for me. So I started an Amazon store, which is quite easy to do. Anybody can do it. And then I was like, okay, what am I going to sell? So I looked around and I discovered something called retail arbitrage, which means I can go into stores, find things on sale. Um, I would scan them with my Amazon app, which I already started an Amazon store. I just wasn't selling anything at the time. I would scan the barcodes and say I found an item for $5 and on Amazon it would sell for $30. And I was like, well, that's a no brainer. And I would buy everything off the shelf. I would put my sticker on it, which is really easy. Then I would just send it to Amazon, everything. So say I bought 30 items, I would send it off Amazon and Amazon took over from there. They would put it in the warehouse. They would get the sale. They would package it. They would ship it. They did my customer service for returns. They did everything. And then every two weeks, you get money deposited in your account and I'd buy more stuff. It was so much fun because I kind of got to do something on my days off and I was satisfying that need to shop but there is no shopper's guilt because I was reselling it all. So that's retail arbitrage. It was fun. It was a great way to start and learn. But after about three months, I was getting a little bit, okay, this is great. But like, for example, I was selling these uh, safety goggles, DeWalt safety goggles, but I wasn't the only person selling them. There was like five other sellers on the listing, which was great and all, but we had to share the sales, which what people talk about on Amazon is sharing the buy box. So whoever has the buy box is the person that when people say buy now, they buy off of them. But we had to share it. And I didn't like that. I was like, okay, so if there's like 50 sales a month, I had to share between five people. I was only, you know, getting 10 sales a month, but I'm missing out on 40. So I discovered private label, which means I can find products out there that are being manufactured. And I put my brand on them. Well, that just opened a whole nother world for me because it was so much fun to develop brands, make them premium, sell them under my own brands, and then have my own listings on Amazon and then get to scale those brands off of Amazon too. So that's what I started doing. I've been doing it for probably four years now, uh, my own brands. There's six figure brands and one is just going exponentially. I don't doubt that it will be seven figures in the next year. So, and we keep launching other products on that same brand. Well, about... Two years ago, I was working one night in patrol. And um, I don't know if Air Jean, do you want to hear my little story? Okay. She's nodding her head. Bonnie and Lauren, don't fall asleep on me. Okay. Anyways, I was on patrol. And if you can imagine, 
I was 47 years old. I'm in uniform. I have an extra 22 pounds of gear on me. And I hear over the radio at about two o'clock in the morning that this laptop got stolen. I'm like, okay, stolen laptop, eh, whatever, who cares? But then it, then it came over the radio that the owner was tracking it on their phone. I'm like, okay, that's a different story. That's more fun. So he was giving us the update on where, where the laptop was going. And I was listening to it. I'm like, I think I know where this person's going. So I tucked my car in. If you can imagine, it's dark. It's two o'clock in the morning. It's just the street lights, And I'm tucked in next to a building. I was seriously there maybe 30 seconds and this figure comes out from behind the building, all dressed in black, black backpack on, or sorry, black baseball cap, low black backpack on. And I'm like, well, that's gotta be him. So I jump out of my car and I'm like, stop, please. And he looks at me and I look at him and we kept your eyes and I'm like, oh crud, this is not going to be good. And he just took off, right? And my 20 year old brain is telling my 47 year body, Yes, Janice, this is a great idea. Let's chase this 20-year-old guy. So if you can imagine, I'm just humping it down the road, dook -a -dook -a -dook -a -dook, which is awesome. And I still in my head was like, really, I should just call the canine officer. Like, why am I chasing this person? So I get him cornered and he's over top of a fence. I've kind of got him cornered. I'm hearing my partners come in with sirens. And I'm like, okay, this is good. I got other people come to help me. And we kept your eyes again across this fence. And you can see in his eyes that he's looking at me going, can I take her? Can I get past her? And I'm like, oh. okay. So he comes flying over the fence. I grab him. I turn to the right with him and we both fall, right? He dumps the backpack, but, but in the fall, I've ripped my pants. I got blood coming on my knees. He takes off. My partner comes in. He takes over the chase. They chase around a building. The guy pulls a knife. There's a taser. There's pepper spray. He comes around the building. Meanwhile, I've gotten up. I've hobbled across the street. And, I, and he comes right around the building into my gun. It's like, please stop. Get on the ground. He gets on the ground. We arrest him. It's all good. I walk back to my where he dumped the backpack. And I sit on the pavement. I'm like, wow, I'm hurt. And seriously, two months later, I'm walking with a cane. And now I've been diagnosed with chronic pain sensitization where my central nervous system is totally out of whack and is slamming me with pain stimuli all the time. Not to whine about that or anything, but it ended my career as a police officer. Right there, bang, one foot chase, done, over. And I was at the point where I was of the opinion that that's all I knew what to do. I was a cop. I didn't know anything else. Yeah, I was selling Amazon on the side gig, but I never considered that as a full-time gig. It was just you know, kind of fun, right? Making me money. But I lost my identity in that spot. And a lot of people are going through that right now with COVID and pandemic, and we have to pivot. And so that's what I had to do is I had to pivot. Of course, it didn't, it took time. Like it took me a couple months to really figure out what to do. And so that's when I said, well, I know Amazon and I have a teaching degree from a long time ago. So I started developing courses and coaching other people on how to develop their own brands. And I'm a little bit selfish doing that because the women out there and men, they have such amazing ideas in their head that when they get these ideas on paper and out on Amazon and selling, they kind of make our lives easier. So I'm a bit selfish that way because everybody's got these amazing ideas and it's just so easy to launch your own product. So that's what we do now with e-commerce queen bee is we help other people develop their brands and get them out there and selling on Amazon and selling off of the Amazon. And it is so much fun. And it's given me that, sense of fulfillment, a sense of helping people that I kind of lost with that foot chase that I probably shouldn't have done, Adrian, now that I think about it. Yeah. yeah so that's the wrap. That's the story about that. And so now I help people um, get their ideas for products out of their head and out there in the public and selling. Amazing. And oh my gosh, yeah, you shouldn't have chased. <laughs> but you know, I, I guess everything for a reason, but what an, what an awful story and how brave are you? Well, aren't um, we all like 20 year olds in our head? Come on. Yes. We all have 20 year old brains. It's just sometimes the body doesn't match and we do kind of silly stuff. Yes. So I, I know that I have like 13 questions. Good. <laughs> Starting from when you almost opened, um, you know, and I think, I think the main question for me is how do you sort of go about identifying 
products. So you said you, you know, initially sort of scan some products and then you offer them on Amazon. Just that piece of it to me is mind blowing, right? Like I'm like, let's go down that path. <laughs> it is. And people get stuck in it. Yeah. So I'm all about promoting finding your perfect product. So your perfect product may not be my perfect product, okay? Because this day and age, you kind of have to become the attractive character of your product. You have to sell it off of Amazon too and market it as the face behind your product, mm. right? Because authenticity sells these days. It's not just cheap stuff. People want to know where they get the products. They want to know the story. They want to watch your journey and it really helps your marketing that way. Mm. So you got to find your perfect product. So you got to look around you like, oh, I'm constantly looking for new product ideas. So I'll be out walking down the street. I'll be out walking my dog and say, I'm having to pick up his poop. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be a better way than these poop bags. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Like, you get it on your hands. So you're just thinking of different things like that. It's like, what can make this better? Mm -hmm. um, you're in your kitchen and I'm peeling potatoes. I, I don't know why my peeler, I always scrape my knuckles. Me too. Always. And I'm like, okay, does no one have like a peel guard for people like me? <laughs> right? Yeah. So I'm constantly looking for ideas and different things. I'm also looking for things that I think needs to be fixed. So for example, um, with the no straw challenge, so that's one of my brands, we started that four years ago. It was our first private label product. And our family, we were down in Costa Rica. I had just gone through a really emotional thing and policing. So I just needed a break. And so as the whole family, we went down to Costa Rica for a month. And it's probably the most amazing place I've ever been. Wow. Anyways, we're down there and we're sitting at a bar and my nine-year-old at the time, daughter, yes, my nine-year-old was in the bar with me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're sitting there and having drinks and she's like, mom, do you know something weird? I'm like, I have no clue. I'm in Costa Rica, Izzy. You look at things a lot different than I do as this nine-year-old and she's my unicorn. Like she just looks at world differently. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I have no clue. What are you talking about? Right? She's like, there's no plastic straws. And then she showed me that picture or that video of the turtle. I don't know if anybody's seen that video of the poor turtle getting the plastic straw taken out of yeah. his nose. Turtles yeah. cry. I did not know turtles cry. Wow. So um, we came back to Canada and there was plastic straws everywhere. So as a family, we launched No Straw Challenge, but we had to make it a bit different because there's a lot of stainless steel straws just coming out at that time because mm -hmm. Seattle had banned straws. Um, British Columbia was just starting to ban straws. Like everybody was getting rid of straws. And so we developed unicorn straws after Izzy. <laughs> so we did rainbow unicorn straws. My son did unicorn logos for the bag. And then we asked for social proof about like, or socially, what are people looking for? And we put it out there on Facebook and it said, well, what are people looking for? And people said, well, I don't like stainless steel straws because I'm scared about breaking my teeth or I don't like the taste of stainless in my mouth. I'm like, that's fixable. Mm -hmm. So we would put plastic silicone tips in with the kits. And then people say, well, I don't know how to clean them. I'm like, well, that's easy. We put in like three cleaners. And then people said, well, your straws are great, but we do smoothies lots and bubble tea and they don't, the bulbas don't fit up your straws. And I'm like, okay, let's put in some smoothie straws. So we had this whole kit developed that was premium that people are what they're looking for. And then we tested it out, right? We sold it around local markets first and on Facebook marketplace to see if it was what people wanted and what the price point was. Well, it sold off the shelves. It was awesome. So then we launched it on Amazon. And after you write your listing and make sure that it's what telling your story, it's a great seller. It's Amazon's choice right now. It's got lots of five-star reviews and it kind of just does its own thing. So us launching unicorn straws would not be your product, most no. likely, Adrian, right? No. No. So you've got to see what in your life product that you can launch that will make a difference and that you can become the attractive character behind. Like what story can you tell mm. right behind that product to launch? Mm -hmm. And then once you launch it, can you build a brand off of it? Like from the one set of unicorn straws, we now have unicorn telescopic, we have silver telescopic, black, we have travel kits, but we've got 13 different SKUs or products now built off the unicorn straws, mm. right? So you build a brand. Now, is this in order to source the actual product is that something that is potentially available through like an alibaba or oh something? yeah okay so can you talk a little bit about that without you know giving away all of your secrets <laughs> oh no i don't mind giving away my secrets actually okay good <laughs> so Tell us everything then 
Yeah. So once you find a product idea, you're like, okay, this is cool. I always, in my course, I say, okay, I've got a spreadsheet, write down every idea that comes to your head, every idea, just write them all down. Mm. Right. And so I expect you to get a hundred and it's really not hard. You think like, oh my gosh, how am I going to get with a hundred ideas? It's amazing how fast you can come up with a hundred product idea once Mm. your mind starts going. So then I'm like, okay. And then I give you my Excel calculator spreadsheet because you have to make sure you make money on it. Right. So I'm like, take those products and put them across. And now let's do a bit of research because do not launch a product without doing research. And I've done it before and I've lost thousands of dollars. Trust me, it's not good. Mm -hmm. So then go to um, Amazon, right? Use your research from Amazon. Say, okay, is there products like mine out there Mm -hmm. that are are comparable Mm -hmm. or that people are already selling? Usually there is. So say with the stainless steel straws, okay, I find stainless steel straws. They're selling for like $18 a package of 10. And then I read the reviews, right? I'm like, well, what issues are people having with these straws? Because people will tell you how to make your straws premium, right? They'll tell you in, they'll tell you in your competitors' reviews on what they're looking for. Mm. So I read those, lots of them, and just get more ideas. Mm. That's then, so smart. That You know what? Yeah. That bit right there, I want to hone in on because that is absolutely incredible. And, and in the past, you know, pre Amazon, there was really no way to do that kind of competitive research and actually find out what people want. Exactly. So good. Even with social media now, put it out there. Like if you want, if you're in an instant pot, I also love the instant pot because there is huge instant pot followers out there. Yes. If you're going to think about launching a product for an instant pot, go into the Instabot Facebook groups and ask, what do you guys think about a product like this? Would you use it? Hmm. Just ask. People will tell you. They love to answer those questions. Yeah. <laughs> right? So once you read all the reviews and you're like, okay, I've got some ideas here. Then there's something called the Jungle Scout Estimator. Okay? And it's free because you don't have to pay for all these apps yet. Right? Jungle mm-hmm. Scout Estimator. Go into your uh, your competitor scroll down to the bottom and there's something called the BSR, which is the best sellers rank. Mm -hmm. Pull out that number. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also pull out what category they're selling in and Mm -hmm. enter that information in Jungle Scout Estimator and then you get to know how many they sell. And then in the profit sheet that I have, just start entering your numbers. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you get this profit sheet free that I give out in a bootcamp, right? Use it free and just put in your numbers and start calculating out how much money you make. And then you're like, okay, well, this is great. Say you found a teapot that you want to launch and you're like, you find the competitor, they're selling 50 a month. You're like, okay, that's kind of cool, but I'm going to make mine better. So I'm going to sell a bit more than that. But that gives me a rough estimate of how many they sell. Then go to exactly like you said, you're trying to find a manufacturer. I don't manufacture. Yeah. Right. There's no point. There's so many people out there with private label that will manufacture for you and you can just put your brand on it. Yeah. So go to Alibaba, which is China or India, yes, Philippines, sir. everywhere, mm-hmm. Thailand. They're all in Alibaba for manufacturers. Or you can look local, Google, um, private label Canada. Look for somebody even who manufactures something here that you're like, you know what? I, w- I want your product, but I want to put my brand on it. Mm. People are willing to do that, right? Especially if they're manufacturers. Mm. The important thing is I'm not going to just suddenly launch a teapot with and buy like 200 units for four months supply to sell on Amazon. Yeah. I'm going to grab them. I'm going to get samples first because that's the most important thing. You need to check the quality because your brand is going on it. Yeah. And if you need a place like Alibaba, um, they will send you samples and you can have it to your door and then test it, test it, test it, test it. Mm. Right. What's wrong with this? Is the handle loose? Is there something wrong with it that somebody in the reviews said, yeah, this is an issue. How can you change it? And then you can go back and forth with the manufacturer about changing that and make it premium. And then also you have to make sure your packaging is premium and people, they don't, they forget about the packaging. If you have mm-hmm. premium looking packaging, that's nicely designed. It makes all the difference. People will spend more money. Yep. They, because you are putting off that perception that you are selling a premium product. Yep. And also, can you add something extra? Right? It's like, yeah, it's just a teapot. Okay. Blue, blue, blue. How about like a book in there about, or a little pamphlet about the optimum tea um, boiling points for making yeah. different tea? Or you see what I mean? Just add something extra and differentiate yourself from what else is on Amazon. Yeah. 
So that's the key about just launching a premium product and finding someone to manufacture it and test, test, test it, get the samples. And you know what? If you get a sample, it doesn't mean you have to launch a product. If you don't like the sample, find something else. I love it. And make sure you're going to make money. And I always tell people what I'm looking for is a product I can sell for minimum $25, but I can buy it manufactured for five. Yeah. So those are my numbers. If I can, that's minimum. If I can find that, then I'm gold. I love and it. Make sure you can build a brand off of it. Like with the unicorn straws, we built a whole brand line off of it. Um, easy. I can launch teacups and tea canisters and just build a brand and you're building a legitimate business that you can start selling off of Amazon too. And so when you're like, you know what, this has been fun. I'm done. I want to retire. I'm out. You can sell that whole business and there's your exit strategy because it's a legitimate brand that you've built. Wow. You know, I, I mean, I, I want everybody to, else to ask questions. I feel like I'm dominating this a little bit. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I really like about what you're talking about is that in so many ways, you have described a, a traditional way to launch a, a product and a brand. Exactly. It's, it's, it's very traditional and fundamental. I think the key differences are that you don't have to almost pay to do the customer research and that you have a platform that allows you to experiment and so that you're not going all into something that right. might not sell. Oh, exactly. We've even used Facebook ads to test products to see if mm -hmm. they will sell. We've done pre-sales. And I'm like, you know what, if it doesn't sell and I've had no one, maybe I've had one person buy it off of Facebook ads. It's like, that's great. Okay. Sorry, but, um, I'll just contact them and say, sorry, but we're not launching this product. But if I sell like a hundred in like three days, I'm like, well, heck, we better get this going. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, Bonnie asks, uh, yeah. where do you source the packaging? So a lot of times your manufacturer will do it for you, mm -hmm. but I want premium packaging. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, how I'll talk to my manufacturer that I've decided on. Cause I like the quality of their straws say, and say with the straws, I like the quality. I like that he, we can make things different. And I've formed that relationship with them. I say, what type of packaging can you do? And a lot of them say, oh, we'll just put in a plastic bag. Well, that doesn't work for reusable straws. Our whole goal was to be <laughs> eco-friendly. So I'm like, well, what about a box? And they're like, oh yes. I'm like, how about a craft box? Mm. Yeah. I'm like, okay, perfect. Can you send me the dye outline mm -hmm. of the box? And what that is, is if you took the box and you undid it and folded it flat, mm -hmm. they'll send that to me. And then I outsource. I do not know Photoshop. Sorry. I don't know. I have no interest in it. Right. I have good ideas in my head and I can draw them out of kind of what I'm looking for, but I need someone else to put that into reality for me. So I'll go on to the gig economy websites. So something like Fiverr, or Upwork, or I love for stuff like this, I love freelancer because I'll make it into freelancer allows you to make a contest. Mm. You'll get a whole bunch of people putting in ideas. Mm. Eventually you'll get what you want out of it. Right. And I'll give you a bit of example about that later if you want. Yeah. They design the packaging for me. They give it to me in AI, which is Adobe Illustrator or PNG or JPEG. And then I send it to my manufacturer. They print everything for me and send me the box. Now, what you do need though, is especially if you're going to sell off of Amazon too, is you need a barcode mm. on your product and you can buy those barcodes. Um, Amazon requires GS1 barcodes, which is they're actually to your company. They're registered to your company. A lot of people don't do GS1 if they're just doing it on Amazon and they'll just get go to like Barcodes Talk or Barcodes National or something like that and get third-party barcodes. There's always a risk for that though. Mm. And the barcode isn't to your company, but you need a barcode. Okay. And that goes on your product. And then once you, once you go to that, that's your packaging. Now it says, Bonnie also asked, do you need different business certification or corporations? I think you're talking about when you start your business, Bonnie, is that right? I can't see Bonnie. Yeah, probably yeah. for the different uh, lines. Like you have the straws and then you have another uh, yeah. you know, Amazon That's store. Thing for, or just for Amazon itself, do you have to have like a special certification or... I don't know. You know, I'm like, yeah. so if you got registered with like New York State, am I allowed to sell, you know, 
all over the area or the country or out of the country? Or do I need something special for that? Yeah. So Bonnie, you actually don't need any certification. You can actually start as a sole proprietor. So when you're setting up your business, if you don't know if you're going to go all in on Amazon, I always recommend, you know, just start as a sole proprietor and any income you get, then you claim online or claim with your own personal taxes. Okay. And I use QuickBooks to keep everything organized. As you grow bigger, I recommend becoming incorporated, right? Um, Because then you can get your EIN, which is your employer's identification number. Mm -hmm. And then you can start, you have to start collecting taxes and everything like that. And sorry, I can't remember what the threshold is in the States about every state is different for taxes. Now with Amazon, when you first sign up, you use your social security number to sign up as your tax ID. As you um, grow your company, when you become incorporated, then you use your EIN number. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you. And now the cool thing about Amazon is you guys had this really awesome court case down in the States, the Wayfair case, where all the states said, hey, why are we trying to track down all these third-party sellers when, why don't we just get the money from Wayfair, right? The taxes. Well, they got through and they were able to, Wayfair had to collect the taxes and remit it. So now Amazon does the same thing. So you actually, in the States, don't even have to worry about collecting and remitting taxes. I think there's 48 states signed up in amazon.com and Amazon collects your state taxes for you and they remit it, which takes the whole stress off of you for that. Now with Canada, difference is we have to collect and remit our taxes ourselves, but QuickBooks or something like that allows you to do it quite easily. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, Now, Bonnie also asked about self-publishing. Are you an author, Bonnie? I'm trying to do a cookbook for pets, for pet owners to make pet food. Oh, awesome. So I'm trying to do it, but I'm having, like, I don't know. I'm, 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 I hate to admit it, but I'm having, like, this big COVID-related anxiety. So I'm not getting things done as quickly as I would like to. So anyway, so I'm, I'm working on that. So that's what I would, that's what I would like to do. It, it's hard right now to launch or um, to get yourself up and going every day. Trust me, with COVID, um, and the anxiety about it. Self-publishing on Amazon is actually quite um, simple, is my understanding. I've been reading up on it because I was thinking of launching my own book also. And there is um, a launch strategy out there that I was reading that I was really quite interested in. And if I oh, remember, good idea. I'll throw the link in there. But yeah, oh, you, just, you just upload it to Amazon in um, JPEG or Kindle format. And you can sell it for like 99 cents when you first launch. And then hard copy... Um, Amazon, from what I understand, does print to purchase. So if people want a hard copy, they'll print it out for you. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's actually a lot simpler than you think. And there's a whole strategy on how to launch, like what your pricing should be when you launch and when you should up it and getting reviews and stuff and sending it out to family and friends and having them buy it before you launch. Oh, that's a good advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. And I'll see if I can find that and throw it in there. Oh, cool. Thank you. Or you know what? I could put my um, email on here and you could email it to me when you get a chance. It's not like... Yeah, sounds good. Perfect. And then Lauren was wondering, this is a great question too. Does Amazon offer sort of a marketplace, if you will, for services? Uh, I wish they did. Like I really do. Yeah. They don't. Hmm. Okay. No, they don't. They, you can't sell courses and stuff like that. That's why I was looking at a book and using the book as a lead magnet, basically into selling my courses with e-commerce queen B. Mm. And so that's one way of doing it is to sell a book or uh, maybe a video. I don't know about the videos for Amazon, what they require, but I know a lot of people do books. Mm. I've got a friend of mine who launched um, one book here. I don't know where it is. A very simple book, right? Mm-hmm. very like uh, there's not even that many words on each title <laughs> right on each page but that's his lead-in book so he sells that and then people contact him for his courses and stuff with regards to that bonnie i got your email thank you very much i'll get that to you hey great thanks so yeah also for your business, do you run it alone or do you have staff i have a marketing company now i am a true so you can't scale by yourself you just can't. You can get to a stage and when you get to that stage, you're like, I am the 
I'm the problem in my company that my company isn't growing because of it, yeah. right? So I'm a true believer in staying in your zone of intelligence. My zone of intelligence is finding products, developing the brand. I do the YouTube videos, like I record them um, and everything to sell the brand. And then I do the design. I do not do any Photoshop. I don't do any video editing, anything like that. I also don't do, we sell off of Amazon now too, using sales funnels with click funnels, but I don't make the sales funnels. I know how to make them. I just, it takes too much of my time. I don't do my own Facebook ads because if you're trying to do your own Facebook ads and you don't know Facebook ads, you're going to lose a lot of money, Mm. right? It's just until you learn. So I hire out to do that because it made a lot more sense to me um, financially um, to hire the professionals who know how to do it versus me trying to learn. So I just tell people is like, say I value my time at $50 an hour. I need to build a website. It's going to take me 20 hours to do it just to learn it and then do it. It's still not going to be very good because I don't know how to build websites. I have to learn how to do it. That's going to be say a thousand bucks. If my ad is my multiplication is right in my head. But I can go on Fiverr and find a guy who just built a website for $300 for me. It's all fully optimized and beautiful. And there's no way I could have done what he did. That saves me $700 of time where I can take that time. And I also like writing emails and writing copies. So I can go write emails where and follow up with my lists of people that would make me more money than spending 20 hours and pulling my hair out trying to do a website. So it's better to hire out when you can. Right? It makes financial sense, actually, though it's hard to um, release that control, let's say that. But if you have a good description and a good um, idea of what you want, you'll get what you're looking for. It's just how you communicate your, your requirements. I'm telling you, I just think that you are offering such great fundamental business advice. Um, and... So, so many of these things are, are sort of like the entrepreneurial trap, right? You try to do everything your, yourself. You try to put more time and effort into things, thinking that you're saving money, but you're actually, you know, going down a path that's not where you're not doing profit generating activities and you're testing everything too. Hmm. Well, I think about like time, like with uh, Bonnie and her Bonnie. Yeah. Bonnie and her book. I'm sorry. I have three books written. I did not write one of them. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't. It was my idea. I dictated what I wanted, but I hired someone to actually put it in writing because they were a lot faster at formatting and putting the words of what I was trying to explain in writing for me. And it got the book done faster. So if you get stuck, like with this example of the cookbook for dog food, I love the idea because seriously, North Americans spend a lot of money on their pets. So if you have the recipes in your head already, if you're better... Oh, I have them written down. I formulate them. I have them. I just don't have all of them and I haven't tested all of them. But I also have some other things that stifle me that are just right now I can't really control. So um, I can get... You could The recipes I can do. Yeah. No, I'll be fine. It's just... When it's just this COVID crap. I know. But the longer I'm in a place that I thought I wasn't going to be in anymore, and it's no. a little stifling and whatever. But you know, I'm good. It's not like I'm. I can't get up in the morning. I can get up. I get stuff done. But then I get stuck, and yep. I'm like, um, is you know, people have no money. What am I going to do? I don't feel like like really pressuring people for sales because I don't know what their situation is, and that kind of stuff is what goes in my head. I'm going to switch your mind there. (laughs) There is a lot of us with money and we can't spend it right now. Let's think about that. I can't travel. I can't go to Costa Rica, but I've got money coming in. My sister is a mortgage broker. She usually travels two to three times a month just on vacation and stuff, but she can't do it now, but she has money. She has Amazon packages getting delivered to her door almost every day right now. (laughs) People with government jobs nothing's changed with their paychecks. Yeah. Right. Like if you think about that, like you're amazed on how many people still have their jobs and it's just switching your thinking and not putting our wallet in someone else's pocket. So whatever's happening with us, with our wallet, that's probably not what's happening with their wallet. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. I and just, it's you know, getting over that guilt of asking because people won't m- have money. They want to spend it and they want to support local people like you. Yeah. Okay. Thank and I, I would also, I would also <laughs> add that specifically in Bonnie's case, so many people purchased or adopted animals during right. COVID and, and it makes people feel good to nurture the this new member of their family. So the cookbook, you're you're almost um, by not you know putting it out, you're robbing people of the ability to nurture the pets that they love so much. Oh, that's a good idea. I, well, that's a good way to think. Can you send that to me so I can look sure. at it every day when I wake up? Sure. <laughs> Because I'm at home with my dogs and they're just looking yeah. at me and I'm like, they've never walked so much in their life because I'm home. I'm like, yeah, I will take the dogs for a walk. I will. You know what I mean? It's so true. It's so true. That's so, so funny. Yeah. I mean, I am, I am so inspired to create. I mean, it's so funny because me too. I have, you know, I have a dog. He's a puppy. He's, 10 months old. I think he's going on 11 months. And what you said earlier, Janice, about, you know, taking the dog for a walk. I mean, he's a big guy. And so, you know, he's a, he's a two bag pooper and I have gotten it on my hands. And then what do you do when you're out on the walk? You're, there's no way to sort of desanitize, you know, sanitize yourself. You're supposed to wear gloves. (laughs) The little the little gloves before you do yes, that. Yes, but it's like that's too much to think about, you know. Um, but uh, there's there's something there, is what I'm saying. Oh, totally. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's totally even like here right right now. It's getting dark around six o'clock and it's rainy. So it's like, well, my dog's out there and you can't see her. She's black. I have a coon hound. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what can I do? There's light up things like colors and stuff, but they always fall off. She just shakes her ears and those things are flying. Yeah. So what else can you make better that things aren't going to fall off this dog, but people can see her out in the dark? Yeah. Well, they make the harnesses that are bright yeah. with the LED lights or whatever. Yeah. I just don't know if that bothers the dog. <laughs> oh, can you make them better, right? Pets, <laughs> pets are food here because a lot of people like like pet recipes especially if you throw some recipes in there with the Instant Pot, I'm sorry, like throw some Instant Pot recipes in there because people love the Instant Pot right now. Yeah. But people love cooking for their dogs. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. they also like when you cook for, like they, I, you know, I also make food like, you know, like a personal chef for dogs. And yeah. Adrian really should try something because she's my neighbor. But, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, they dogs like that too be because they feel like it's fancy because I started it out in the Hamptons. I don't know as a Canadian if you know I what know, I'm yeah. talking about. Okay, so I started it out there when I was living out there. So And then I had an accident, couldn't do anything for a few years. So now um, I'm in another area, which is a good area to do, you know, it's the people that go to the Hamptons pretty much where I am. So I'm trying, but like I said, it's, it's just a weird, and for like for a few months earlier when COVID first started and New York was bad, like my supply chain suffered. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, what not- you know what I haven't seen here? So there's lots of food boxes for humans. Where's my food box for my dog? Oh, they have them. Um, good. Yeah, but I, I've never seen it either, Bonnie. The farmer, The farmer's dog. But um, it's really expensive to to ship that perishable stuff. Like if I did something like that, I would just have to stay in my little area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, but on Amazon, you could make something like a bark box, right? And you could have it with Bonnie's organic treats or something. And if there's all you have to do is have an expiry date on it, and then have the F. I think it's FDA approval for making it. Well, I think they just approve anything at, at this time. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't think my FDA really does anything. <laughs> no. Lauren, what, Lauren, what do you do? I just had to get off mute. Thanks. Um, I'm a producer. I produce videos and podcasts and events. Awesome. I've been doing lots of podcasts lately. So nice. Do you um, edit for people? Is that what you do? or like? Yes. Yes, I edit podcasts. I currently edit videos in my full-time job, but I don't do that freelance. 
It's oh. too time consuming. <laughs> yeah. It's also hard to compete against Fiverr and Upwork and Freelancer in those places. Um, you know, luckily what I do is I mostly work with Catholic entrepreneurs. Um, so it's like niche down enough that people like working with me since I have like a good background in their area of expertise. And what program do you use? I use Audition. Oh, uh, for a podcast? For editing. Awesome. I wish somebody would make a course. There probably is out there just a course on how to edit your podcast with Audition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's not your expertise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's not your course because we like you as the attractive character. So I want to buy. Yeah, all- I, you know, it's something I am eventually going to do. That's mm-hmm. why I asked about services because I definitely want to start generating passive income. If there's anything that life has taught us all in the last, you know, year is that multiple income sources is like very important. Yes. Plus, I like sales funnels. Hmm. I use sales funnels for products or for mm-hmm. uh, information stuff. So. I'll use a Facebook ad. So I've got like a lead generation item. So like say my free um, Amazon bootcamp, right? Mm -hmm. So that's my lead gen. I give it away for free. It's three videos and just get your Amazon store up and going. The last video usually has um, telling about the courses and everything. If you like this, if you like me, if you want some more information on how to uh, launch your whole product, then that last video has that information. But with the lead gen and for like you with editing, if you put something out there, the top 10 um, edits that you should not forget in your podcast or the top 10 edits to do for your own podcast kind of thing, mm-hmm. free, then you're getting people's email and then you can nurture them and date them and turn them into your clients. And then mm-hmm. once we like you, we sell, you can sell us anything, right? Mm-hmm. And then you yeah. build value ladders. So your lead gen to like a $27 product to your $1,000 course to your... $500 a month group coaching to $1,000 a month private coaching. Like you just. Yeah. So absolutely. Just, just getting off the button, doing it. That's the hardest part. Yeah. that I think that that is the hardest part. And, you know, mm-hmm. one of the things that I really like about the, the e-commerce aspect, and it's, it's a little different for Bonnie because Bonnie has already created this brand. She's already selling stuff. One awesome. of the, one of my, you know, and I think other people's issues is that it's very hard to sort of separate, especially if you've created a brand that you're passionate about. It's hard to almost make business decisions. Yeah. So what I really love about the e-commerce strategy and sort of finding a product and finding a market for that product is that you remove yourself from the equation. And yeah. because to me, that has been my biggest, I don't know if I would call it a mistake, but my business, my biggest learning point has been that I have way too much of my personal self, self-worth, you know, judgment, all of that wrapped up into what I do. So I'm not able to make the same type of strategic decisions that I would make on a brand that I am not so personally invested in. Oh, exactly. yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, but with e-commerce, what I use is there's this program called Fetcher, mm-hmm. right? And every day they send me an email on how much money I made profit and how much I lost for expenses. Wow. Every day I get it in my email box. It automatically does it with Amazon. And suddenly if I look, I'm like, okay, why am I losing money? And then I have to really reevaluate, right? Like with no straw challenge right now, we started it about four years ago. Absolutely loved it. It went, I think it's almost run its course. My problem is, and this is where we talked about it, is it was my first brand. I love it, right? My kids helped with it. We built it up. But there is so many straws on the market right now because kind of everybody's jumped on the bandwagon. It's like the fidget spinner. If I was the first one to launch a fidget spinner and you start building a brand out of it, it's yeah. great. But you have to reevaluate that. Yes. Has that brand run its course? Is it time to end it and start another one or look at something different? Mm. So you're saying, that? you're kind of saying, just take your ego out of it. Yo, yeah, you totally have to. You have, have to take to. a step back and crunch your numbers. And the problem with us is we are all, we like to do things and help people and everything. But unless you're making money doing it, there's no point. It's not a business. It's a hobby. 
So you really got to crunch your numbers and know your numbers all the time. I love it. This such great business advice. Like, and Janice, I mean, thank you so much for sharing. You, you know, you pulled back the curtain. You, you, I feel like you told us everything. Yeah, it was really great, helpful, <laughs> and oh, Amazon fun. I feel good now. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Can't wait for your cookbook. Thanks. I know. Oh. I'll send All you right. on la- launch strategy for uh, books. Perfect. You're so helpful. Yeah. I love you. Thank you. I'll send you I, a book. Isn't she great? I know. Like, that's what... Uh, uh, the, the she's I'm not American. American. Oh, <laughs> probably. My, husband, my husband's and kids are. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my husband's dual. He just voted last week. And why the heck do you guys have Kanye on your voting ballot? I'm sorry. I we thought don't it was a state. That was just so that people... Because Trump thought that if he got... If the Republicans saw that they've got Kanye in the air then the African-American people would vote for him and take votes away from Biden, but it's not going to work. I mean, they're not stupid. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I looked at them like, is this a joke? Kanye's actually on it, the it, ballot. Yeah, it's a joke. And it's not all, It's not in all states. He's not on New York. Oh, he isn't. My husband's from Louisiana, so he voted for Louisiana. Oh. We were like, what the hey? <laughs> that is, that's utter insanity. Yeah, so. well... Wow. Yeah, they had Republican people go in and do it. They 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 talked him into it and then they did all the work and signed him up and could, did the petitions and got the signatures. And it's just they're really it's kind of sad because they're taking advantage of his mental illness. Yeah. I, that's exactly what I thought, Bonnie. Exactly. I'm like, this is not fair. You're making fun of this guy for being yeah. not cool. They just thought they were gonna get they thought that they could, you know, peel votes off of African Americans. <laughs> Stupid yeah. well, and racist stuff. <laughs> I feel for you guys down there. It'd be interesting. We watch up here your votes. So yeah, that, <laughs> that's, that's all the way. Yeah, you have the perspective of being able to watch the, the you know, the madness as it happens. But it also affects us, right? There's ripple yeah. effects. Huge. It's going to affect the whole world. It's ridiculous. Yeah. 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 yeah, we're not even allowed in your country anymore because of the stupid COVID ridiculousness. <laughs> yeah, our borders are closed. But for example, <laughs> we're at health. Where I live, we've had, on the peninsula here, we've had 11 cases the whole time. Oh, my um, God. That's great. Where are you? On um, Vancouver Island. Nice. So you're on the West Coast. Yeah, just across from Seattle. So we're very, um, like, we wear masks all the time. My kids wear masks constantly at school. We're constantly two meters apart or six feet. Mm-hmm. And it's just a different world we live in right now. We just accept it and help each other out because that's your responsibility as being right. a society. Well, that's how it used to be here. But now I don't know what happened and it can't stay like this or my head's going to explode. But um, <laughs> I'm buying a whole lot of masks because I kind of using them as, um, you know, like an accessory. Totally. They sell, wow. they, they sell cute masks. And I said, you know, if Nike puts them out or Gucci, people, everyone would wear them. I don't know. This, you know. Some of these people that just are brand crazy, some of these big brands should put them out. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. But I, I mean, I have no problem really, you know, but if you're working in it all day, I guess, you know, cause I used to do a lot of restaurant work and catering, that would be hard, but you know, whatever. It's just, I wear it. You know, clear ones here that people wear where it hooks onto your chin and just has a clear shield wow. across your mouth. It's kind of cool. Wow. But like the schools are using them as fundraisers. They're selling. Well, that's brand a good idea. Cool ones. Mm-hmm. That is good. So Janice, I know we only have a couple of minutes left here. Um, and I just want to ask, I, I mean, I would personally like to sign up for the free boot camp uh, to get even more. How can we do that? Yeah, go to www.ecommercequeenbee. Uh, www.ecommercequeenbee. There's an American and a Canadian boot camp. Oh, okay. And a blended family. So my kids are dual, my husband's dual, and I'm Canadian. So we kind of, but I sell in both Amazon Canada and Amazon the States. Okay. So, okay cool. com, and then you can also get the free toolkit, which has the bootcamp has the Excel spreadsheet that you can start entering numbers and running your products to make sure you make money. Because again, know your numbers. Yeah. So such great advice. I mean, I am eating all of this up. Literally, I have pages of notes and I can't wait to... I want to experiment on something that you know, I think is a really good idea, but I'm not so, uh, you know, personally tied to. 
And I want to come back to you and tell you how successful yeah. it was. I had somebody well, send me their private label product and it was quite cute. It was a, it was a box, which I really liked. Sorry, I don't have the box anymore because I recycled it. But it had all this stuff in it where it had like a journal for Beatitudes and cards Ooh. and it had a candle in it. It was like a whole box of everything to just be grateful. Like you pull your gratitude card every day and then you write in your journal what it means to you and everything. Oh, cool. Cool. I'm not that type of person to actually, hmm. I have trouble sitting for longer than a minute, but <laughs> I thought it was a kind of a cool box for the, for the market that she was going for. It was all beautifully packaged and premium, but she didn't sell it on Amazon. I'm like, hello. So she's now got it all barcoded and it's off to sell on Amazon. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So good. So much opportunity, really. And I think that's, you know, the perspective too. We have to look at this as there is opportunity. The world does not shut down. People do have money to purchase things and they want to purchase things that are going to make them feel a little bit better or help their family out or something like that. Because it, you know, that's sometimes the only thing that we can do and that we do have control over. Oh yeah. And there's those huge niches right now. Like if you're into home office goods and you're selling stuff to yes. make someone's home office better, hello. Yes. Right. Yes. Is huge right now. Yep. Right. Um, if someone put together, I'm just starting to see them a homeschooling box. Yep. Oh okay. yes. So just stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Like think you are at home all the time. Like entertain me. What am I going to do at home? Yeah. <laughs> what makes what makes today different than yesterday because every day is the same the same the same yeah just don't sell masks on amazon not worth it no well i'm not going to but thank you for all your help and i'll be in touch with you i appreciate it i too would like to take your boot camp no take it awesome. i love it's been awesome lauren bonnie it was absolutely a pleasure to meet you um just reach out if you have any questions about anything i i'm usually pretty good at answering Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to post this recording to the uh, She Leads Network so that other people can experience it as well. Um, awesome. So hopefully others will also be signing up for the boot camp. But Janice, thank you so much. This was wonderful. You. It's fun. You know what? I'm off to get a leftover turkey sandwich, which Ooh, is so as part good. about Thanksgiving. Oh, so good. <laughs> well, so enjoy good. thoroughly. And thank you so much. Awesome. Catch you guys later. Okay. Bye. Bye. So what did you think about that conversation? I know for me, I want to dive in to Amazon. I want to think about the things that I can improve in my life. And I want to do research because I want to create an experiment and see what works. If you want to create an experiment as well, I highly encourage you to check out Janice Carmina at ecommercequeenbee.com. She's got some incredible resources there. She's got a toolkit. She has a boot camp. Um, and she's, she has a, a chat box and she's on Facebook. And you can message her, uh, and she replies instantly. And as you heard from the conversation that we had, Janice is interested in helping other people to do what she has done. And I think that it's an incredible opportunity for us as women leaders to figure out different ways that we can earn revenue, that we can earn income, that we can be profitable. It's important, in my opinion, to have multiple streams of revenue. And I think Janice's story demonstrates that really well. You know, anything could happen at any time. We are very much reminded about that with COVID. Uh, and so sort of hedging your bets and placing your attention into a couple of different things that might be able to keep you going is something that I believe is very smart. Uh, of course, we don't want to go all in without doing like Janice says, doing your research. So 
be careful. Uh, don't spend too much money on your store before you get proof that people actually want to buy what you're selling. Be careful. Use Janice's toolkit. Know your numbers. One of the things that I love is that this is not some gimmick, although it is talking about leveraging the platform of Amazon to create a business. That's something that we all have to think about. You know, obviously we're benefiting Amazon as well here. So if that's something that goes against your principles, I can totally understand that at the same time. And and the reason that I say that is because as a small business owner, I know that I've heard from many other small business owners that Amazon, you know, has has put other mom and pop shops out of business and that perhaps they are not the most socially responsible company out there. So I get it. But this is also a way for us to perhaps earn a side income that at the end of the day can benefit us as small business owners. And if there's something that can benefit us, then I am for it. Of course, that's something that you have to decide for yourself. I really appreciate you listening in to this conversation. I really appreciate all of the comments that you send to me about this podcast. It is my duty and my mission to have conversations that are not coated in sugar, that we can talk about all aspects and that we can debate the merits of a variety of different approaches, a variety of different topics. And I hope that as I move forward in this podcast, that I have conversations that are even more real even more genuine, and that we explore things from a variety of different angles. So thank you so much for listening in. Please check out the She Leads community over, you can go to my website, sheleadsmedia.com and click on community and it'll take you right over to the Mighty Networks, which by the way, is completely free. There's a lot of valuable conversations that are going on there. Uh, and it is not a membership site, except for the fact that it is off of Facebook. It's a private community. Nobody is selling your information or benefiting off of you, uh, except each other, right? We're benefiting each other. We're putting our expertise out there. We're sharing it with one another. And to me, that is a tremendous value. Also, the She Leads 2020 online conference is happening soon. We are moving forward with the event. Uh, It's happening. I think it's happening in November, although we might be pushing it because of the election to early December. More to come on that. Right now, you can purchase tickets on Eventbrite. Uh, the, the event is scheduled for November 12th as we stand right now. If we do move it, you have the option of having your ticket refunded or you can just transfer it to uh, the, the date in early December. No problem at all. I would love, love for you to go over there and show some support and purchase a ticket. The conference is going to be highly interactive, lots of networking. And I just can't wait to see all of your faces. So thank you so much for listening in to the Sugar Coated Podcast. The Sugar Coated Podcast is brought to you by the She Leads Podcast Network, where you can find other incredible shows from wonderful women doing great things and getting their thoughts, ideas, and opinions out into the world. Talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.